In the 150 years we've been in business, many things have changed. Our greatest achievements are rooted in the things that haven't. Years ago, the person you called banker was also the person you called friend. When it came to service, there were fewer layers and friendlier smiles. And banks earned the trust of their customers and community while working tirelessly not to lose it. At Independent Bank, all this remains true today. Sure, we've made advances that help customers bank more conveniently and more comfortably. But at the end of the day, we know that people really need a trustworthy partner committed to their financial goals, dreams, and aspirations. And we've been happy to be that partner since 1864. to meet the candidates. I'm your host, Kim Encotis, and I'm here with Jeffrey Nolan, candidate for the District Court of Muskegon County in the 60th District. Welcome, Jeffrey. Thank you. Pleasure hey, to be nice here. Nice to meet you. And well, tell us a little bit about <coughs> your background and why you're running for District Court. Sure. Uh, I've been an attorney here in Muskegon County uh, for 15 years. Uh, graduated from Detroit College of Law, which was in East Lansing at Michigan State University. Uh, and after completing that, uh, finished the bar exam and was sworn in in November of 2001 and I've been uh, here in Muskegon County at Nolan, Nolan and Schaefer for that in, uh, entire 15 years uh, handling uh, all different kinds of cases, criminal cases, uh, personal injury cases where people have been injured, uh, family law cases, mm -hmm. some landlord tenant issues uh, and things like that. Well, you come from a family of a tr with a tradition of service for this community. Talk about some of the influences that have guided you to become an attorney and, and want led you pursuing being a judge. Well, sure, yeah. Uh, I have a large family. I think it's 84 at last count. And uh, there are now uh, nine people that are attorneys uh, or retired judges. Uh, and uh, we have two more in law school, so soon that will be 13. Uh, and but. Obviously, with 84 people, we have pretty much, if you have a job that you can name, we've probably done it at some point. Uh, we have a priest and a nun, educators, uh, recently got our first doctor in the family, so it's exciting. Um, but my father was the first attorney, uh, Patrick, in the family, uh, and he was actually uh, taking his first year bar exam uh, test when I was born. So uh, the story I'm always told is that he was being quizzed as I was, as my mom was basically in labor with me. So I like to jokingly say it must have come through so through osmosis or something. Um, so uh, the legal field and, and, and law has been really ingrained in me from the beginning uh, of my life, starting from when I was very young, following my father around, watching trials. Uh, it was always something that was really fun uh, and exciting and interesting and then uh, clerking for him in the summertime uh, months uh, in school and coming back uh, in later years and then clerking as a law clerk as opposed to just more of like a runner uh, when I was in high school uh, and then ultimately coming back here and practicing. Now when you, when you chose to get into law, did you have a specific field that you wanted to focus on? Not particularly. Um, I always enjoyed uh, personal injury and, and uh, criminal defense. Um, I, I like helping people, and, and I think those are the ones that really help people. Um, I was not a big fan of family law, uh, but I've actually kind of become, I don't want to say used to that, but uh, I think I'm much more empathetic uh, than when I w probably was 15 years ago, and uh, it's a really good feeling to be able to help people through those traumatic times. Now, I actually really enjoy that. Well, let's look at some of the, help us define what the district court does as opposed to circuit court and the probate court. So give us a sense of what some of the challenges that you'll be facing as a jurist. Sure. The district court handles a very large volume of cases. Uh, just last year alone, I believe there were over 46,000 uh, filings. So, you know, between four judges, that's, that's a hefty number to get through. 
Uh, and not only is there a large number, but there's a large variety of cases. And in case people at home uh, aren't aware, uh, the district court handles uh, criminal cases, misdemeanor cases, which are uh, crimes punishable by up to one year in jail, and those are handled from the beginning through the end, so from arraignment, then you have a pretrial, then you have a trial, which could be either by a judge or a jury. If there's a conviction, then you have a sentencing, possible probation, and maybe probation violations, things of that nature. Uh, it, with felony cases, criminal cases that are punishable by over a year in jail, uh, so basically prison time potential, uh, we would handle the first two phases of that, which would be arraignment, setting the bond, and uh, preliminary examinations, or what are called probable cause hearings, sometimes too, and if there's probable cause, then the case gets transferred to circuit court, or ultimately a trial, uh, or some other type of resolution. Uh, if there is not probable cause, then the case would be dismissed at that point. Uh, but also we handle uh, circuit, or excuse me, uh, we handle uh, civil cases, people asking for money damages from someone or a business or something, uh, in amounts of $25,000 or less. Uh, all landlord-tenant uh, cases, all small claims cases, traffic offenses, which would include routine traffic stops as well as drunk drivings and things of that nature, um, as well as issuing of search warrants and arrest warrants. So let's talk about um, some of the some of the uh, restrictions or, or challenges that you have as a jurist. Um, are there issues related to mandatory sentencing or fines that um, either are too imposing for the public, or is, is are those guidelines pretty much set by the state? Well, in, in district court, you don't have a lot of uh, mandatory sentencing. Um, you have obviously maximums, but but. Uh, not really mandatory ones. Uh, there are some, uh, you know, mandatory uh, fines that you would have to give. Um, very few of the cases that we would see would have a mandatory minimum sentence. Um, so there is some discretion there. Uh, one thing that I don't like, uh, as far as, uh, and this is as a lawyer and as a jurist, but as a jurist, you'll have to follow the law. Um, our driver's responsibility fees, I think that those can be somewhat uh, prohibitive to people actually being able to get a license back. Um, those types of mandatory fines I don't necessarily enjoy, but that's the law right now. Well, uh, could you talk a little bit about the influence of having sobriety courts and um, veterans courts now and juvenile court? How has that made a difference in the court system here in Muskegon County? Well, we have in the district court what I would call uh, well, we have four what I would call specialty courts, uh, and that would be a misdemeanor sobriety court, a felony sobriety court, a veterans court, which was actually started by my Uncle Mike, who's now retired, uh, and a mental health court. Uh, and by all accounts, they've been successful in helping people, uh, you know, get a second chance uh, and, uh, you know, kind of stop the cycle of repeating it's offenses. Uh, and. They're great, and I'd like to see them all continued. Uh, I think they're a great benefit to the community. Uh, but one thing that I've talked about during this campaign, and even really before that, is uh, I believe our county has the need for an additional specialty court uh, called the drug court. Uh, my wife works in the ICU uh, at Mercy. Uh, she's seen a lot of overdoses in, in her time there. Uh, there was an article not that long ago in the uh, Chronicle talking about uh, how the deputies here, the, the county sheriff's department, is training their deputies to administer Narcan, which is the medication used to reverse the effects of a heroin overdose. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think those things all kind of scream that let's get this drug court going. Let's get these people the help that they need if they want it. You know, all of these courts that we're talking about now are all voluntary. You can't make somebody do them. Okay. So if somebody wants to help, they're available there if they're eligible for it. And, and are you, as a, as a jurist, able to offer more alternative sentencing and treatment? Um, could you talk about some of those options that you have as a jurist? Well, sure. I mean, if so, in the criminal uh, aspect, you're talking about when somebody either pleads guilty to a, an offense or uh, you know is convicted by a by a judge or a jury. Uh, you could sentence somebody to jail, you can give them fines and costs, you could give them probation, uh, you could have them you know, attend certain counseling that you or their probation agent might feel are necessary. Um, so those are all, or a combination of those, so those are all different things that can be done. 
Well, let's talk about another aspect that uh, is increasingly in the news <coughs> and actually quite a demand on the police department. Let's talk about domestic abuse cases and uh, civil disputes like, like that. Um, how much of those come before the court, is it the district court? Uh, I would say that there's a fair number. I don't have the exact numbers of how many uh, yeah. domestic violence cases there are. Uh, I've handled, I don't know how many now, in 15 years. Um, but uh, it's, it's difficult. Uh, it's, it's difficult sometimes because, uh, I don't want to say a lot of times, but oftentimes y y these cases are, are cases where a couple, whether they're married or dating, right. you know, get into an argument, one of them loses their head and, and calls the police, and then the next morning they don't want, they don't want to pursue it. Well, guess what? It's going to be pursued. And as a jurist, as a judge, sitting there, you, you don't have the authority to say, well, they want to get dismiss it. So it's going to be dismissed. So, so you need to follow through. If there's a trial and there's evidence that there's an assault, then yeah, I would be bound by the law to follow that. Now, uh, <clears throat> you know, I've had cases where where that's occurred, and uh, a judge has given them the minimum fine and cost and sent them on their way, because they realize it's basically just somebody maybe overreacting to something and and. You know, threw a cup of water at somebody and got him wet. That's technically a, a battery. You know, uh, it's an unconsented contact. Uh, and are more violent cases maybe moved to another court? Well, if there are injuries involved in the domestic assault, uh, those could be an aggravated domestic violence. Um, if there are severe enough injuries, there could it could be transferred. It could be a felony case at that point if there are multiple. Uh, Domestic violence is if it's like a third or higher, uh, then those would be circuit court cases, yeah. Okay, well, stay with us. We'll be right back with Jeffrey Nolan, candidate for district judge here in Muskegon County. My name is DJ Hilson, your Muskegon County prosecutor. I urge you to vote for Michael Pullen for Muskegon County Sheriff. He has served Muskegon County as professional law enforcement officer for 29 years. Through his training and experience, he has dedicated his career to community based programs. I am confident that his proven leadership and his dedication to community makes Michael Poulin the most qualified candidate for Muskegon County Sheriff. I'm Michael Poulin, and I approve of this message. In the 150 years we've been in business, many things have changed. Our greatest achievements are rooted in the things that haven't. Years ago, the person you called banker was also the person you called friend. When it came to service, there were fewer layers and friendlier smiles. And banks earned the trust of their customers and community while working tirelessly not to lose it. At Independent Bank, all this remains true today. Sure, we've made advances that help customers bank more conveniently and more comfortably. But at the end of the day, we know that people really need a trustworthy partner committed to their financial goals, dreams, and aspirations and we've been happy to be that partner since 1864. The Pizza Ranch, featuring a buffet that is guaranteed to please even the pickiest eaters. From a full soup and salad bar, pizzas and breadsticks, to mouth-watering roasted chicken, potatoes and gravy, vegetables, drinks, and desserts, all for just one price. Their menu features a wide variety of delectable favorites. You can dine in, carry out, or have your meals delivered. There's something for everyone at the Pizza Ranch. McDonald's Candies, 1064 South Getty Street in Muskegon, features an assortment of chocolate-covered nuts and creams, peanut clusters, fudge, seafoam, turtles, cherry cordials, and regular and holiday novelties. Welcome back to Meet the Candidates. I'm your host, Kim Encotis, and I'm here with Jeffrey Nolan, candidate for 60th District Judge here in Muskegon County. Well, Jeff, uh, we were talking a little bit about the types of cases that you handle, but let's talk about what's motivating you, what, what you bring to the, the, the case here in terms of your experience and what's motivating you to run for judge. Sure. Uh, there are several, I guess, motivating factors you could say. Uh, one, it's always been kind of a, a dream of mine, I guess, to, to become a judge, um, starting again, as we talked earlier, when I was very little and, 
in watching my father in trials. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed watching uh, the sides make their arguments, but it was also quite interesting to see the judge, you know, be able to listen to both sides, um, you know, fairly, keeping an open mind and, and waiting for the evidence to present itself and treating everybody fairly with courtesy and respect. And, and then also then you see some judges that don't do that. And it's really unfair uh, to the litigants and to the public. And, uh, and in my 15 years of practice, I've seen a lot of really good judges and I've seen some not so good judges. And uh, I've had a, a fairly successful 15 year career uh, and it's gotten to a point where I can stay here and and continue my work here and, and be quite successful or I can make sure that our county has the judges that they need and deserve uh, a judge that will be fair will be uh, courtesy uh, courteous uh, will treat people fairly will follow the law uh, equally and uh, and do something about it so I decided to run uh, you know I can afford I, I'll be if I'm successful I'll be taking a pay cut so uh, you know I but I can I can do that you know, but it's a career achievement too. I guess. I mean, I don't look at it as a lot of people. I think that run for these types of things look at it as a promotion, um, as you know, because it's a it's a it's a pay increase for some, um, probably for most. Um, and I don't look at it that way. I look at it as a service to my community. What's the best way that I can help our county? And I think this is the best way I can do that. Let's talk about how temperament and. Your sense of ethics really play into the role of a judge as a decision maker and someone who's really guiding the case. Uh, what have you learned and, and what do you think prepares you for this position in that regard? Sure. Um, well, obviously, as, as an attorney, you're representing one side and you're advocating for that side, whichever side it may be, um, regardless of what the facts may be. I'm not saying that you're dishonest, but you're leaning one way. For sure, that's your job. Uh, as a judge, uh, your role is to listen to both sides, uh, to treat both sides fairly with courtesy, with respect, to give everybody their due time uh, because, you know, with that volume of cases, it, it could be easy, I suppose, to become somewhat callous and just kind of try to rip through them really quickly um, and just, you know, shuffle papers more or less. Uh, and, and that doesn't do justice to the people or the courts, um, and we need somebody there that can do that. Tell me a little bit about how um, your involvement in the community, either with your family or on your own, has helped to shape your passion for this role. Sure. Well, um, again, uh, well, starting with my family, I guess, uh, they've always kind of instilled in me uh, that it's uh, better to give than to receive. Uh, that uh, what you do in your community to make it better is is more important than uh, you know making sure that you have more than everybody else. It doesn't make it that that's not going to make you happy. Um, and so charities and and organizations that help people are always something that I'm looking to be involved in as much as possible. You know, currently I'm on the uh, PTO uh, where my children attend school at Churchill Elementary. Uh, in the past I've been a board member of uh, Love in the Name of Christ in Muskegon, uh, past secretary of the Muskegon County Bar Association. Uh, until until I aged out I was a member of the uh, Greater Muskegon JCs yeah. uh, and things like that. And I know this may be controversial with some but can you tell us a little bit about how your faith has, has moved you in, in terms of your humanity and your sense of de service? Well, um, I grew up uh, in a family that, uh, you know, went to church every week. I I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I do that now today, uh, but I, I think that's, that's kind of kept my uh, moral compass, I guess, pointing in the right direction. Uh, and uh, I think that will help uh, if I'm elected. Well, I think that people want to know that if someone is grounded and they have a sense of fairness, and I, you made that that point quite well. Yeah, and, and you know, and what what's easy to forget in this job and and uh, as a judge is <clears throat> that this case, in the grand scheme of things, might not be 
that big of a case or, or that big of a deal. But to this person that has this case, it is the most important case, and it is a very big deal. And you need to keep that in mind when you're, when you're hearing these cases, that this person, their case is the most important case you have that day. Well, and along those lines, how important is it for you as a judge to make sure that the, the defendants understand the charges that are put against them so that they, they're better prepared not just rely on their lawyer, but they know what they're facing? Well, yeah, and that's typically done as best as possible at the arraignment. Uh, where you would read a, a formal reading of the charge uh, and explain to them what the maximum penalties are and, and you would ask them you know and make sure that they understand these charges before they are going to enter a plea you know guilty or not guilty or what's called uh, no low contendere or no contest or to stand mute which means to say nothing. You mentioned landlord <coughs> and tenant disputes um, are there other types of uh, business related cases or fraud or um, other civil infractions that would come before your court? Uh, well, certainly, um, all civil infractions would either be handled by a district court judge or a magistrate. Uh, any civil case, uh, whether it's a landlord-tenant case uh, or a small claims court case uh, or a business case or a fraud case uh, or a personal injury case, if it's $25,000 or less is what they're asking for, it's going to be filed in the district court. Two. You mentioned landlord-tenant cases. Are there other kinds of business-related cases that come before the court, and can you talk a little bit about that? Certainly, uh, any type of uh, civil case where, whether it's landlord-tenant, small claims, or a business case, or a fraud case, or a personal injury case, if that amount that that person is asking for is $25,000 or less, that's going to be filed in the district court. Okay, well, we're going to come right back and join us with Jeffrey Nolan, candidate for district court judge here in Muskegon County. My name is DJ Hilson, your Muskegon County Prosecutor. I urge you to vote for Michael Poulin for Muskegon County Sheriff. He has served Muskegon County as professional law enforcement officer for 29 years. Through his training and experience, he has dedicated his career to community-based programs. I am confident that his proven leadership and his dedication to community makes Michael Poulin the most qualified candidate for Muskegon County Sheriff. I'm Michael Poulin, and I approve of this message. Beginning as a lumber company in 1911, Frederick's Construction has been servicing the Muskegon area since 1969. Family owned and operated, they specialize in roofing, siding, windows, insulation, additions, doors, decks, and more. Located at 1940 Commerce Street in beautiful downtown Muskegon, their phone number is 231-722-3937. When you want quality worksmanship, you want Frederick's Construction. In the 150 years we've been in business, many things have changed. Our greatest achievements are rooted in the things that haven't. Years ago, the person you called banker was also the person you called friend. When it came to service, there were fewer layers and friendlier smiles. And banks earned the trust of their customers and community while working tirelessly not to lose it. At Independent Bank, all this remains true today. Sure, we've made advances that help customers bank more conveniently and more comfortably, but at the end of the day, we know that people really need a trustworthy partner committed to their financial goals, dreams, and aspirations. And we've been happy to be that partner since 1864. Welcome back to Meet the Candidates. I'm your host, Kim Encotis, and I'm here with Jeffrey Nolan, who's a candidate for the 60th District Court in Muskegon County. Well, Jeff, we've talked a little bit about your role as a judge and as an attorney and your involvement uh, with the community. Let's talk about your experience as a candidate and sure. how your outreach has affected you and the things that you've learned from the people that you've been talking to out in the public. Yeah, it's, it's been uh, a really uh, great experience uh, running. Uh, this is the first time that I've uh, been a candidate for anything. Uh, so a lot of it's new, uh, a lot of it's uh, taken me a bit out of, I guess you would call my comfort zone, which is a good thing. Um, I'm, I'm a bit of uh, more of a stay-at-home person when I can be and enjoy my time with my family, but uh, it's been really great getting out and meeting people and going door-to-door. -door. It's actually been 
probably the, the most fun I've had uh, as far as the campaign things go um, and meeting people and you know once they realize you're not there to sell them something uh, they're usually very happy to see you and, and ask you some questions about uh, you know most people don't really know what uh, a district court judge does so it's been fun I, I think for everybody. Well, we happen to run into each other outside of Mona Shores High School in Norton Shores, and uh, you had an enthusiasm that was great to see in having been a candidate. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that because you can knock on a number of doors, and people could be home, but they might not answer the door. But uh, when they that, come and yep. find out, oh, here's someone who wants to talk to me, it, it's a different experience altogether. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a rewarding experience, and you know, I try to be out there uh, every day that I can. You know, I, was out, uh, I was out in Fruitport yesterday, and uh, I'll be out there again. I can get out of here uh, and get my work done uh, tonight and uh, probably the next few nights and then uh, move on from there and uh, until, until November 8th I'll probably be out there every day. Well I respect the fact that you've been out there uh, all over the county and I think that's a real plus for you. So tell us a little bit about um, why you're running and why people should consider you for their vote. Sure. Uh, as I had said earlier I I'm running because I think our county deserves to have good judges. Uh, I think that uh, it's important to have uh, judges that are going to listen to both sides, that are going to be fair, that are going to be impartial, uh, that are going to follow the law uh, based on what the facts are presented and not necessarily on what their own personal beliefs are. Um, I have, I believe, the experience of handling pretty much every type of case that you could go, uh, that could go in front of a district court judge as well as I have the support of uh, many members of the community. Uh, I have uh, three judges that have endorsed me, uh, three sitting judges that have endorsed me, uh, which would include the chief judge of the district court. Uh, the district court is obviously the court that I'm running for, and that would be uh, the Honorable Raymond Castrava. I ha have been uh, fortunate enough to also receive the endorsement of the chief judge of the probate court. That would be Ray uh, Neil Mullally, as well as uh, Judge uh, Greg Pittman, and I've, uh, as, as a judicial candidate, it's a nonpartisan uh, right. position, uh, so I, I think it's important to receive endorsements really from both sides of the aisle, and if you can do that, I don't know what better way to show that you, you are a fair person if they could, these two sides that are typically polar opposites can agree and say, hey, this person is, is the right guy. Um, and in that respect, I've been endorsed by uh, the uh, Service Employees International Union, or the SEIU, which I believe is the largest, uh, has the most employees, union employees in the county, uh, as well as Operating Engineers 324. Very uh, pleased uh, and honored to receive their endorsement, uh, as well as the uh, Muskegon County GOP, uh, uh, as well as uh, Democratic Prosecutor uh, D.J. Hilson and several others that uh, anybody could take a look at on my website, electnolan.com. And as we know, the, the election's on November 8th, and it's important that you show up and cast your vote. And Very Jeff, we'd like to thank you for joining thank us you. today. Thank you. I really appreciate the, and, the time. And thank you for joining us on Meet the Candidates. My name is DJ Hilson, your Muskegon County Prosecutor. I urge you to vote for Michael Pullen for Muskegon County Sheriff. He has served Muskegon County as a professional law enforcement officer for 29 years. Through his training and experience, he has dedicated his career to community-based programs. I am confident that his proven leadership and his dedication to community makes Michael Pullen the most qualified candidate for Muskegon County Sheriff. I'm Michael Pullen, and I approve of this message. McDonald's Candies, 1064 South Getty Street in Muskegon, features an assortment of chocolate-covered nuts and creams, peanut clusters, fudge, seafoam, turtles, cherry cordials, and regular and holiday novelties. Your vehicle is an important part of your life. It gets you where you need to go, so it's important to take good care of it. At Vans Quick Lube, every vehicle gets up to six quarts of high-quality Quaker State Oil, a new oil filter, and a free car wash with every service. At Vans Car Wash and Quick Lube, you will get a quick wash that will be done right the first time, and you'll experience the hand-scrubbed and Simonized difference. With six convenient locations, Vans Car Wash and Quick Lube will keep your car looking good and running great.